It's you. I'm glad you are here. I need someone with me tonight. I'm David Ganzel, and welcome to Armchair Imagineering. This is the show where I share ideas that I wish theme parks would implement. That's right, I, a nerd who thinks very highly of himself and has absolutely nothing at stake, will attempt to give pro tips to the trained professionals actually qualified to make these decisions. But most importantly, this is a show where I can talk about theme parks without having to coordinate all the complicated on-location shooting. And today, I'm gonna give Disney advice on how to make sure Rock and Roller Coaster remains timeless. Rock and Roller Coaster is one of the most beloved rides at Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios at least as long as half the park remains closed for refurbs, and it's easy to see why. It's a high-octane launch coaster with a loop-de-loop -loop because Disney gets one of those per coast. But unlike California's, which is just loosely themed to California until it was just loosely themed to The Incredibles, Rock and Roller Coaster is themed to the music of Aerosmith because nothing says Hollywood Park like a band from Boston. But as well as the music of Aerosmith works as a coaster soundtrack, it does lock the ride down in a specific point in history. Disney rides are generally beloved for their timelessness, and timeless is not the word I'd use to describe specific depictions of specific celebrities at a specific age. Granted, the ride is right across the way from a recreation of a fictional 1960s TV episode's recreation of a fictional 1917 hotel, so it's not the end of the world if the ride is just a period piece. But if Disney wants to keep the ride current, or if any of the members of Aerosmith at any point turn out to be monsters who have no place in a family fun park, it's possible that someday Disney might want to replace the band. But who could they possibly replace them with? The fact is, there aren't a lot of young rock bands anymore, at least not any who are famous enough to appeal to a Walt Disney World audience. Despite Aerosmith's invitation, popular music has walked a different way. So if they want to keep this coaster rockin', but don't want to commit to a potential has-been, the only choice is to replace Aerosmith with a fictional band. And if this park still had any MGM involvement, the choice of band would be obvious. We have Spinal Tap from the UK! You must be the USA! As cool as that would be, it's probably just as well that it's off the table. I mean, we all know Harry Shearer doesn't do rides. But there is another fictional band who encapsulates the spirit of rock and roll almost as well, who would make an even better fit for this ride, and who is already part of the company. In fact, they already have a presence in this very park. Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, which am us. <laughs> Dr. Teeth and the Electric Freaking Mayhem. This would honestly be a really easy fit. The most effort it would take would be filming a new pre-show screen, which wouldn't be that much more effort than filming one of those YouTube videos you're always doing with Muppets. It would certainly be less effort than all those movies and TV shows you're not making with them. Just film a new scene of Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem recording an album and just put it on that same screen you had Aerosmith on. And hey, bring back Ken Marino to be the engineer again, why not? Maybe actually give him a line this time. Then once you get on the ride, what really needs to be changed? The decor on the track is already pretty reminiscent of the sets from the end of the Muppet movie. Maybe just add two or three more Muppet-specific flats? Just, just add that flat of that tour bus somewhere and that's it! You fit the Muppet aesthetic perfectly! All you're doing is changing the soundtrack and what a great soundtrack it would be! picture that. Then just replace that footage on the last screen with footage of Electric Mayhem performances from The Muppet Show. Super easy switchover, barely any effort on your part. Of course, if you want to put effort into it, you could replace that last screen altogether with a stage with an animatronic Electric Mayhem giving a performance, like how you eventually replace that screen at the end of Grand Fiesta with animatronics of the Three Caballeros. 
but I mean, that would cost actual money that the rest of this ride wouldn't, so I would be willing to settle for the cheap version of this with no animatronics, just new screens and new music. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking right now. Yes, Dave, of course I want there to be more Muppet rides, but does it make any sense for it to be on the opposite end of the park as the existing Muppet stuff? Come on, everyone. This is the park that for years had the awesome Toy Story ride on the opposite end of the park as the mediocre Toy Story restaurant, and currently has the Star Wars launch bay on the opposite end of the park as the Star Wars ride. This is Hollywood Studios. There are no rules here. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that I want them to get rid of the current version of Rock and Roller Coaster. I'm just saying that when it is time for Steven Tyler to move out, this is the replacement that would excite me the most. I would also like to say that I relinquish all rights to this idea to the Walt Disney Company. Disney, this idea belongs to you now. I promise that were you to go through with this, I would not sue or ask for credit or compensation or anything. Just, just pretend you never saw this video and say that it was your idea all along and I will not raise a fuss. So what about you? Would you be interested to ride Rock and Roller Coaster starring Electric Mayhem? Or do you have any ideas of your own on how to update rides in inexpensive but effective ways to keep them relevant? Let's talk about this all in the comments. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.